enough of the presentation on types of chemical reactions. I hope you had a good break on whatever you were going to do, whatever you were doing. Enjoy whatever you were going to do. All right, so let me go ahead and pick up where we left off. So we have gone through combination reactions or, or synthesis, decomposition reactions, and combustions of a hydrocarbon. So now we're going to do single replacement or single displacement. So in this case, you have an uncombined element reacting with a compound. So if the general form is A plus BX makes AX plus B. I like to call this the king of the hill reaction. Remember the game king of the hill when you were a kid? So someone has climbed up the hill and proclaimed themselves king. A tries to knock the king off of the hill. If A is successful, this reacts. If A is not successful, there's no reaction. Right? So one thing is knocking something else off. Again, there's some really nice videos about this material. There's a nice video um, on types of reactions that we found on the internet that is in this section as well, All right? So this would happen. These are used like in plating a lot of times, and batteries use this type of reaction, All right? So basically, if A is a metal, then metals replace metals. So A would replace B if A is a metal. Also, A has to be more reactive than B. How do you know that? Hang on to that. You'll see that in a slide or two. So for example, zinc. Now, is hydrogen a metal? Remember we talked about that before. In an acid, hydrogen is a metal. So hydrogen, zinc would be replacing hydrogen. So the zinc goes with the chlorine. Okay. And then if A is a non-metal, non-metals replace non-metals. So it would be kind of like XB. So chlorine is a non-metal. It would replace iodine, the non-metal, if it reacts. So then here you can see the products. So the zinc will knock the hydrogen off. Remember, hydrogen is H2. And remember why when zinc is with chlorine, chlorine is a negative 1, zinc is a plus 2. So they're going to combine in that ratio, in the appropriate ratios, and then you fix it by balancing it. If you click on Next, you'll see here's the balance equation. So don't be concerned that there's only one chlorine here and two here, or one hydrogen here and two here. We take care of that with balancing. Why don't you see if you can come up with the products of this one on your own? Hit pause. All right, let's see if we can get the products. So the chlorine is going to replace the iodine. And remember, iodine is I2 because it's a halogen. And then the chlorine will be with the potassium. Always write the metal first. And of course, potassium is a plus one. Iodine or chlorine is a negative one. And then fix it with balancing. Ready? There we go. So that's how single replacements work. Now, so it's really pattern recognition. You've got to be able to look at a reaction and go, oh, I see, there's an element with a compound. Right? Now, the activity series is something you'd be given. So I don't expect you to memorize an activity series. If you need this, I'll give it to you. But you do need to know how to use it. So for the metals, the ones on the top are more reactive than the ones on the bottom. And this is, activity is not the same as reactivity, but it's related to it. So, and, it, and we talked about reactivity uh, on the periodic table. There's nuance to it, but you can see it kind of follows the pattern, right? Down a column, potassium is more reactive than sodium, calcium is more reactive than magnesium. When you start getting diagonal comparisons, it's a little bit crazy. So, um, you just have to use this. So, for example, magnesium is reacted with nickel nitrate. Well, magnesium is here. Nickel is way down here. So this will definitely react, right? So we'll see if you can write the balanced equation on your own. Give you a minute. Hit pause. And there it is, all right? And then to balance, well, we had to balance this anyway. And so just remember, this is all nomenclature coming up with this. And then why is the magnesium, why is there two here? That's understanding charges. Okay, next one. Mercury is in a solution of copper sulfate. Mercury is Hg. It's way down here. Copper is here. That means mercury cannot replace the copper because mercury is less reactive. So this would be no reaction. All right. So make sure you understand these. And again, the pattern of these is this. So seeing the patterns. And when you look at a reaction like this, and you say, okay, an element with a compound. And then you use the activity series. All right, the last type are double replacement or double displacement. And again, we'll do a lot more with this in the slides on ionic equations, which will be posted as soon as I get them done, and the videos as well. 
So I call this the square dancing reaction because they are changing partners. If you see, it's AX plus BY makes AY plus BX. So A was with X, now A is with Y. B was with Y, now B is with X. You like pretty colors? This is a kind of the same thing. The yellow goes with the blue. Okay. And there's all sorts of different types of them, but basically they're following that pattern. And we'll, don't worry about these so much. All right. So here's an example. If you take potassium iodide and you react it with lead 2 nitrate, you get a solid of lead iodide. But I'm going to show you how to predict the process, uh, how to predict the products. See if you can just come up with the unbalanced equation, though. Okay. Here we go. So Ki, right, potassium iodide. Lead 2 nitrate, lead is a plus 2, how do we know? It says so right there. We are told it's PBI2, and then KNO3. And this is aqueous, it just got over covered. And in the balance, that you can do that on your own, but that it's balanced. All right, now, predicting products is a little tricky, so here's the steps. I want to write down what the ions are, rewrite the ions on the other side of the arrow. So what's going on in double replacement reactions is you, or there are reactions of ionic compounds. And so in ionic compounds, if you put them in water, the positive from one could associate with the negative from the other. And like I said, when we talk about ionic equations, that's how we'll determine, well, how do we know if it actually reacts? But rewrite the ions on both sides, then put the ions together, and then balance it. So let me walk you through this. So magnesium nitrate and sodium carbonate. Whoops. Okay, magnesium nitrate, sodium carbonate. So magnesium. Mg2 plus nitrate. This is the nomenclature piece again. So you got to memorize those ions. I told you before on the very first set of slides on equations, have your nomenclature stuff out because you can practice. Sodium carbonate. So what I meant by rewrite the ions, I rewrote the ions over here, but you see how I put the carbonate with the magnesium instead of with the sodium? So I'm just rewriting them, but I'm switching them. Now I'm going to put the ions together. So the magnesium with the nitrate, the sodium with the carbonate, the magnesium with the carbonate, the sodium with the nitrate. And when we do that, we get this, right? And again, you can review your nomenclature so you understand how those formulas are like this and or catch me on Zoom. And then the balancing piece, and we've gone through that a lot. Uh, for ionic ones, if an ion stays together, you could balance NO3 as its own entity if you want. But the way I showed you works just fine. Right, so balanced looks like this. So, like I said, we'll try, we'll go through these, all right, try them on your own, but I'll, I'll click through them slowly. All right, so first step is write the ions. So there's the answers, okay? So determine the ions, I put them in a separate slide, good for me. Just made these so I don't know what they say. I'm literally making this stuff up as I go along, <laughs> gang. All right, so the potassium with phosphate, barium with chloride, rewrite the ions on the other side. You know, I've emphasized all semester making yourself go step by step by step. There are so many little, easy, very common mistakes people can make on stuff like this. There's a lot to keep track of. So make sure, go step by step. That couple slides back, right, back here. Whoops, too far. I gave you the steps. So make sure you follow those steps. So that's where I was. All right, so let's get the ions. We just did that. Now we'll put them together. Right, K with the PO4, BA with the CL, K with the CL, BA with the PO4. And see how these subscripts did all sorts of interesting things? That's to get the right formulas. Why are they like that? I think if you look at nomenclature, right? And then to balance them, okay. all right, I believe there's one more. So try this on your own. Get the ions. So chromium 3, that means the charge is plus 3. Sulfate is a polyatomic ion. Now we'll put the ions together. And now we'll balance it. And that should do it. All right, so this is a practice, practice, practice. Let me just summarize everything. So th we, this is the first part. This is the expectation. This is what I need you to be able to do. So for combinations, just go from words to a balanced equation. We cannot predict those products very well. Same with decompositions. Go from words to the balanced equation, but I did. there was a slide 
There was actually four, I'm sorry. There was four given on the slide, not five. So memorize those ones that were on that one slide on decompositions. Combustion of a hydrocarbon, you need to know the other reactant. I didn't write that here, but you need to know it's plus oxygen and has CO2 and H2O. So I'm going to fix this slide a little bit, but I'm not going to fix it in the video because I don't want to re-record the whole video for this. Okay, single replacement, right? Recognize net here. I want you to be able to tell will it react or not using an activity series, and then of course predict the products and balance. Double replacements, there's going to be more, but for now, predict the products and balance. So knowing how to go from here to here, and we went through that. Uh, the slideshow on ionic equations is the one where we will determine uh, how do we know if it reacts or not. All right, so that should give you a lot to work with, get you through everything except for the ionic equations piece. Escape and stop the recording.